Let's talk about my website design process from start to finish. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, welcome and welcome to another episode of Wine and Design. I know this is not a wine glass, but I just loved it because it has a little skeleton on it and I am in total fall mode now. I'm so excited. This is like my favorite season, but thank you guys so, so much for coming. If you have not been here before, I post every Wednesday and Sunday and I am a graphic designer. I love to sit down with you guys and talk about my business experiences, my client experiences, and how I'm really learning how to become the best graphic designer I can be. And I wanna share everything I learn with you guys um, because I feel like we all can grow together and succeed together. So I really hope you stick around and that you enjoy this video. I am so excited for today's video. I'm gonna be talking with you guys all about my website design process and how I really approach a website design, how I work with my clients, and honestly, how long it takes me. But I know that all of us learn in such different ways. Some of us learn from watching videos like this, some of us learn from reading, or some of us are just very visual and want to have something easily digestible with um, some creative touch to it. So I have a free guide down below where you guys can download a free infographic guide that goes over all the steps I'm gonna talk about in this video, but in a very easily digestible way. So if you guys wanna download that, that'll be linked down below. Definitely check that out. Even if you watch this video and wanna read that, I think that's a great way to kind of see my overall process. That'll be linked right down below. Definitely check that out. Um, I am sipping on some white wine today, so I'm really enjoying that. That. I feel like I'm really gonna transition into the red wines coming up soon since it's autumn and I'm so excited. But enough said, let's hop into my step-by-step -step process. Okay, step one, this is the initial discovery call with my clients. So I wanted to first off explain that before hopping into the discovery call, my clients have most likely filled out my contact form on my website which I really hope that they did. And if they do reach out to me on Instagram or email or maybe somewhere other than my website, I always send them my contact form. That way I can have my automated system send them the scheduler to book their discovery call. But not only that, my contact form has a few questions in there that are really gonna be helpful for me when we hop on that discovery call. So a few of those questions I just wanna mention are number one, the budget. I have a range of numbers that they can choose from and if the minimum number in there isn't even where their budget's at, that'll save both of us so much time and worry, I guess, from bringing that up on the conversation. So I like to have that question in the initial stages so that we know kind of what we're getting into. And then I also just like to ask where their business is at right now and like if they could explain to me a bit about their business. I really like to have those initial questions answered. That way I know how to guide the conversation and really kind of what to research before the call. So I highly recommend if you don't have that process set up yet to make sure that they're filling something out, even if it's your scheduler that has the questions after they schedule, filling something out to help you guide this conversation. Now for the initial discovery call, if this is a purely website design client and not branding and website, the number one question I always like to ask them is, do they have branding yet? If they don't, I typically do not take this client. If I've worked on their branding and it's maybe a year down the line, they decide they want a new website, that's perfect. Or if it's a client that doesn't really know what they need, I can kind of guide them into more of a branding and website package. But that's the number one question I wanna ask because I cannot build something off of no branding. If they don't have a color palette, if they don't have a logo, if they don't even have their typography set, then I'm really not gonna have a good starting point. So if the client doesn't have branding, then I will really try and sell them on the branding and website package and come up with some sort of package deal so that they feel like they're not just getting talked into um, sales and everything. So I like to have that conversation initially though, because sometimes it's just not a good fit if they're not willing to work with you on the branding portion. Um, and you wanna make sure that you love what you're building and that you can use it for your portfolio. So always, always ask that. But my other question I ask about the website is if it's e-commerce or if it's just an informational website, because 
If it's e-commerce, that is completely going to change the way my proposal looks. E-commerce websites are definitely a little more expensive. It's a lot more time consuming and a lot more work. So I want to make sure I'm asking them right off the bat what kind of website they are in need of. And then I just want to kind of form that relationship and understand their passions and where they're at with their business, where they want their business to be. So after the discovery call, I like to write down all those notes right away. And then I have about two days, I tell them that I will be sending out a proposal. So I give myself two days, even though sometimes it only takes me one or less, uh, because I really want to make sure I customize the proposal, make it look really nice and go over everything we discussed and the package details, as well as the start date and the payment plan. So I want to give them all the details so that there's nothing left unanswered. That way they feel confident selecting the proposal and hopefully moving forward. So I do have a proposal template on Dubsado that makes it really easy for me to add the package type that they want and just add the customization and make it fit for the client's needs. So I like to send that as soon as I can because it's fresh in both of our minds and it's exciting. Okay, step three, if they have accepted the proposal and they've signed the contract and they've submitted their deposit, make sure they submit the deposit because you don't want to start on something that hasn't even had a deposit down yet. But once they have done all that, it's time to begin. So my very first initial step is to send them their client portal as well as the questionnaire that will help me get even more insight into their current business. So I do want to send that client portal as this next step because the portal will have my task board in there, which not only helps me, but helps them understand what I'm working on during what weeks and when they're gonna have certain things in their hands. So I really like to make sure that I explain to them what the portal's about. And to do that, I do have a video walkthrough where I tell them this is where you'll find your task board, this is where you'll find your emails, and I like to break it down for them so that there's no questions unanswered. Ultimately, communication is the biggest thing you can do for a great client experience. So I wanna make sure that they understand everything going on. All right, the next step is to begin the design process. So at this point, I'm hoping that they filled out the questionnaire and now it's our start date. So on the start date is, is when I actually jump into designing the home pages. I don't design the whole website. For me, I really like to approach it with just the home pages in the start. And I like to give them about two different designs to choose from. Sometimes if I'm feeling really excited, I will give them three designs to choose from. But most of the time that third design is gonna look similar, just a little bit of a different layout or different colors. But the reason I like to give them multiple options is because if they like a certain direction over another, then they can tell me that and we can go down that specific direction. So I like to give them two very opposite homepage initial designs so I can really get a feel for what they like and what they're drawn to. Um, so that is my initial step is to design those home pages. At this point though, we do not have content yet. We do not have images. Typically, I like to have images from my clients weeks before we even start but most of the time that doesn't happen or they have a photo shoot scheduled or they don't really know what to take for photos or maybe they just don't have it yet. So if that's the case, I like to just use placeholder images and placeholder copy and I'll get to that part a little bit later. All right, the next step is to get feedback on those initial designs. So I've gotten questions here and there about if I like to get on calls to accept feedback or if I just do feedback over email. I've gone so many different ways with this and ultimately it's kind of up to the client. I mean, I have my specific communication styles that I stick within and that's email or a Google Meet or Zoom meeting. But most of the time my clients just like to communicate over email and this is one of the reasons I love Adobe XD. It actually allows me and allows my clients to pin comments on specific parts of the design. So if there's one image they don't like, they can actually place a pin there, let me know, or if they don't like the layout or if they wanna add something, it's so easy to communicate with my clients on Adobe XD and I think it's just a seamless way to get that feedback. But when I do send these initial designs, I give them about four to five questions to answer. That way I can guide them into providing me the most efficient and 
um, really well thought out feedback because I don't want to hear, I don't like it with no explanation. I really need to know so I can make the next round of revisions worthwhile for both of us. All right, the next step is to hop into more designs. So at this point, I'm going to design the interior pages as well as make any edits to the homepage that they want to see. So this is when I just get in full design mode and I have so much fun with it. I find inspiration from a bunch of different places, but a lot of times I just, I'm really inspired by the homepage design and I kind of have a feel for where I want to take the design from there. So the interior pages is all, de all dependent on the questionnaire. If they filled out the pages that they will be needing, that'll help me understand if I need to build an about page, contact page, service page, or if it's a shop page. Um, and for shop pages, I do like to show them how that will look as well as a product page and how that will look too. So I don't like to do every single product mock-up. I just like to give them the initial template of like, this is how it's gonna look for your product pages and for your shop pages. So that's how I do it, but I do like to jump into those interior page designs and the edits and get that out to them. The one thing I have not mentioned during these design steps is I always send a video walkthrough of why I designed what I designed because ultimately sometimes people don't know why designers choose the things they do and I like to kind of tell my clients, you know, I laid it out this way to break the page up or I added this font here to really have a call out kind of graphic um, and I like to just explain everything so that once again, no questions go unanswered to get feedback and to make sure that the copywriter has now begun their copywriting process. So every designer does this so different. I have found that for, for me, I really like to design with a blank slate and give my copywriters the framework of what to write and where to write it. So I know some clients or some designers like to design off of the copy and that's like their framework. But for me, I find that I, understand more of like what copy needs to go where and then i just let them do their part of creating beautiful copywriting so i do have a copywriter i have found her this year and she's been amazing um, and she has a quick turnaround so i feel like at this point of the process is when it's a perfect time to hand her the entire mock-up of the website and let her have fun with it because at this point too the clients have filled out her intake form and they are just ready to go and she's ready to create that content for me. So this stage of feedback is so important because once I get to the development part of the website, I don't like to accept a whole lot of edits, at least entire framework edits because that's gonna be really difficult to do once I have everything set up on the website. It's not that difficult, but ultimately that's gonna take a lot more time than it would to just completely edit it on the design portion and the mock-up portion. So I really wanna make sure it's clear to them that they tell me everything, all the feedback they have right now, that way I can jump into the development portion with no edits left remaining. So I really wanna make that clear to them and yeah, it's very important to me because once the website's developed, I have my launch plan and yeah, we'll get into that. Okay, so the next step is to develop the website and typically I develop this on my own. However, I do have a developer on my team that I actually just will hire on the side if I am super busy with other projects. He can go help me develop the website because ultimately I've already designed it and it's just making it functional. So sometimes I'll send it to him, but I do like to develop it on my own. I think it's kind of fun to see it all come together and I like to develop majority of the time on WordPress. I'm sure you guys know this by now. WordPress is my go-to platform for many reasons. I'll leave a video up here that goes over why I love it, um, but I like to develop on WordPress and make it functional there. And at this point in the process, because my development portion takes about two weeks, um, sometimes less, but I like to tell my clients two weeks because I am at this point of the process hoping to get the copy from my copywriter so I can plug that in and then once I send it to my client, it's basically their entire functional website. So this website development portion is a little bit longer. It's the two week part of the process, but it's really important and I wanna make sure I test it, make sure everything's functional. And if it's an e-commerce website, that's gonna take probably even longer, but I like to have a two week mark of development. Just to do a website walkthrough with my client. So at this point, I have done everything I really need to do. I've built 
designed the website, I've developed it, I've tested it, I've added the copy, and now it's just to walk my clients through the beautiful website that we created together. So this is when I will accept a few little edits here and there if they just want maybe a color change somewhere or a button to link somewhere else, that's totally okay. What I really meant by giving me all the feedback is making sure that there's not huge design changes that is gonna make the whole page look different. So this is when I just walk them through, make sure they understand how it works, where the buttons go, and where the contact form is gonna lead them to, and all of the questions that they might have will be answered on this walk through call. I do like to hop on a call for this portion. It makes it so much easier to walk them through what it is that I'm looking at. So that is the step nine portion of my process. Right. The final exciting step of the process is the website launch. So website launches in the past for me, I didn't make it a big enough deal that it really is. I mean, it's been close to 10 to 12 weeks that we've been working on this and it's at a point where it's ready to be launched and ready to be under their domain and ready to be viewed by their customers. So I wanna make this exciting for my clients. So to do that, I do send my clients an email on launch day with all these emojis, making it super fun and including some complimentary website um, launch graphics. That way they can go post on their social media, they can celebrate it and get some traffic flowing to their website. So website launch days should be so fun. As a designer, you should be so proud and you should take the day to go celebrate yourself, get a coffee, get whatever you want. Um, but I do recommend making these website launches really exciting to not only get the potential customers excited, but to get your clients excited too, because they invested in this process and it's a really, really cool time. So that is the final step of the process. And that is my entire website design process in total. 10 steps and typically like i mentioned before it takes me around 10 to 12 weeks to design a full website i know that might seem kind of long but i really like to dive deep into my clients websites and make sure that i understand we have everything on there that the copywriting reads beautifully that they have the photos that they love and that everything is just perfect for them so 10 to 12 weeks is pretty typical for my websites and it's super fun, but I really hope that this was helpful. I hope that you found some insight into the way I kind of lay that out. And that's exactly how my task board looks for my clients. They will be able to see each one of those steps and the due dates that are tied to each one of those steps. So that is my process. And let's cheers to that because that was a lot of talking. But like I mentioned at the start of this video, I do have all of those steps in an infographic guide right down below. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, if you want a printout version of all those steps I just gave you, that'll be linked right down below. Definitely check it out. I've made a really cool, easy to follow infographic if you're curious on all the steps I take to get to a functional website. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you found some help from it. And I am just so happy you're here. So I really hope that you guys stick around for more and cheers. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, week, night, evening, whenever you're watching this. And if you enjoyed this, I would appreciate it so, so much. If you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Caught behind the Venetian blinds Had to reach for the city lines And this ain't where I